Hello everyone, my name is Dr Amanda Owen and I'm a lecturer in the School of Geographical and Earth Sciences at the University of Glasgow and I'm going to take you on a virtual field trip to Sikha Point uh, which is located in Scotland. If you have any further questions about this uh, virtual field trip at all please do not hesitate to get in contact with me. So a first thing that you may be thinking about is why do geoscientists go into the field? The natural world is a geoscientist laboratory, so it's common for a geoscientist to go into the field to collect data, make observations and make primary interpretations. Although it is worth noting that geoscientists do collect data in other environments, uh, for example in a laboratory where they'll use instruments to measure certain properties of rocks, or they may analyse satellite imagery. But when we are in the field we can make these primary observations of the landscapes and the rocks that sit within them. It's common to do a certain degree of interpretation while this data is still in front of you, but you can also bring back samples or photographs or in digital outcrop models to analyse further once you're back at the desk. With respect to a geoscience degree, this is where we can apply concepts that are taught in the lecture theatre or laboratory environment, and it's where we can train our students to make appropriate observations and interpretations of the landscapes and the rocks. So this virtual field trip is designed to give you some insights about how we make observations, record those observations and come to interpretations of outcrops. This field trip is centred around a place known as Sicker Point. Uh, it's located on the east coast of Scotland, about one hour southeast of Edinburgh. The site is also informally known as Hutton's Unconformity. Now James Hutton was an early geologist who realised important geological concepts and found evidence for his theories at this site in 1788. There are a number of sites in Scotland that are known as Hutton's Unconformity, but this, is, this site is arguably the best example. The site is protected through its designated status as being a site of special scientific interest. And as you can see from the photograph, this outcrop is situated on the coast, and care often has to be taken with regards to the sea in stormy weather. So first of all, I'd like to talk through some key concepts that will help you interpret this outcrop. Now, James Hutton uh, was working on a local farm and would often have to clear sediment from drainage ditches before else they would get clogged up. And through this work, he realised that over time that water was eroding the landscape, transporting that sediment and then later depositing it further downstream. Now we can all observe these processes in the landscape around us. Today we can all look at a river and we can see that is a road in the landscape like you can see in the example on the left hand side here. Now it takes that sediment and transports it downstream. It might deposit that sediment within the river channel itself or it may take it out to the ocean where it is deposited out into the sea. And you can see by that middle image there that you can see the sediment plumes going out into the ocean where the river has delivered that sediment. However, what Hutton realised was these processes were relatively slow and occurred over long time frames. This was quite controversial at the time as it meant that the earth was a lot older than religious views held at the time. Bringing all of this together, Hutton conceived the principle of uniformitarianism. And this, in a nutshell, is the principle that natural processes occurring on our planet today have been at work in the past operate over long time scales and will continue to operate in the future. Now sediment is actually deposited on near horizontal surfaces in our modern environments. Although we can observe rivers flowing down steep hills, particularly in mountainous areas, we do not see a lot of deposition of that sediment within the channel until the river is on a much gentler slope. This is the same in the deep ocean where sediment is carried out into the deep water and then deposited on relatively flat basin floors. They're not entirely flat, but relatively speaking, they're quite gentle slopes. This sediment accumulates through time and as it does accumulate, it forms what we call beds. And you can see on the right hand the, uh, image there an example of how we get these layers of rocks forming through time. These layers of sediment deposited on top of each other then buried and then cemented to form rocks which these core with these core principles we can better understand the rocks at sicker point so what i would like you to do now is switch over to the workbook to undertake exercise one 